What's up guys, XM360 here, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing yet another Sanwu Guardian series laser. This is the third one in my kind of uh, Sanwu review series I've been doing lately. This one is going to be their Guardian series green 520 nanometer 50 milliwatt laser. So I got this one in the smooth stainless steel option, and this one retails for $150, but they also have other power options with different colors that go for different amounts of money and they also sell this laser in the red copper host but those only go for as low as 150 milliwatts in the 520 color they don't offer the 50 milliwatt although if you reached out to them they could probably work something out for you and they also sell these as opposed to the smooth style you can get it with grids and groove handles um, like the 405 that I recently reviewed so these do ship from China, so you will uh, need to expect a little bit of a longer shipping time if you are in the U.S. This model right here has a weight of 155 grams, runs on one 18350 flat top lithium ion battery, and it has a 20 millimeter copper heat sink, and the host itself, like I said, is made of stainless steel. For this model, they advertise a duty cycle of 60 seconds on and off, and it also has threads at the very top to attach attachments. And there are different lenses that you can buy, and the one I have right here, um, at least I'm assuming, is the standard three element lens. That's the lens that comes with all of their lasers, and then you can upgrade to either a G2 or G7. And right here on the screen are the advantages and disadvantages to each one of these lenses. So the laser operates with one single push on, push off button located at the very bottom of the laser, um, right down here. And there's also two little holes at the bottom of the laser if you wanted to attach a lanyard. I believe that's what the holes are for anyway. And the laser has a tail cap, which is a couple of centimeters from the bottom of the laser. You unscrew it and that's where you're going to insert your battery. And you insert that 18350 battery with the positive end facing the diode and the negative end facing the button. And if you don't decide to get the batteries from Sanwu directly, just make sure that you're getting flat top ones, otherwise they won't properly fit inside this host. So once you screw it back together, it should turn on. And we are getting a little power on this one. It seems kind of dim. The batteries probably don't have a lot of juice on them from shipping, but I am able to turn on the laser to show you guys the green color. And if I didn't mention it already, this is a single mode laser, although I know Sanwu offers a lot of multi-mode lasers as well, and they may offer it for this color and this uh, power rating, I'm not sure, but the one I'm working with here is a single mode. There's also an adjustable focus on this laser, which is maybe an inch or two from the top of the laser. You unscrew it in and out to adjust the focus and create a focal point if you wanted to do some burning. Now you need to always make sure that you use laser safety glasses whenever you're using this. Uh, I'll link some good ones in the video description below. I'm going to do some testing in different lighting levels now, and this is a somewhat dim indoor lighting level. It's tough to see here, but I am able to just kind of see the laser beam looking down the axis of the laser. Uh, the dot is very bright, and if I move into an area that's a bit darker, I can see that beam a bit better looking down the axis and somewhat from looking diagonally as well. And moving to an outdoor setting, I am able to see that dot during the daytime. I'm not able to see the beam whatsoever, but I can see that dot even from several hundred feet away on the rock wall over there. I can still see that dot. For me, I liked the divergence on this one at a distance. I thought it was pretty good for a direct diode laser. I mean, it doesn't really match a DPSS with those little tiny dots, but it was pretty good at a distance. Moving on to a nighttime setting, obviously you're going to get some good visibility. You can see it somewhat looking horizontally and looking down the axis of the laser, you can see the beam very well. And that dot is also very, very bright. And this is where you need to be the most careful, although you need to always be careful, but especially at nighttime, um, never aim it at any people, any vehicles, any planes, any living things, and try to keep it off of your neighbor's property because they won't appreciate that and you don't want to get the police involved or anything. So just try to be safe and practice some common sense. I'm now going to move on to the LPM test to measure this laser's power and I'm using my laser BA LPM and I will probably speed up the results here for you guys but there's also one thing I wanted to mention that I'll try to show you guys later on in the video as well. This laser kind of has like a weird little one to maybe half a second startup time. It's not like instantaneous like some other lasers where you push on the button and the laser's immediately on. It has this very, very short little delay. Um, it was just barely noticeable to me, but I thought it was worth mentioning. 
So with my three tests here, I'm getting an average result of about 46 milliwatts. So that's just about right on spec with the advertised 50 milliwatt rating. And if we upgraded to the G2 lens, I definitely think we'd get uh, well over 50 milliwatts for our power reading. So I am very satisfied with that power output. I'm now going to move on to the burn test here. And while I'm going to let some of this footage run, I am going to kind of cut to the chase here to save you guys the time. At the 46 milliwatts of power, this one just really doesn't have enough power to it to do any good burning. Um, I, I was able to make like little etch marks and a little bit of smoke come off of darker colored objects like electric tape and black plastic. And I was able to get like a tiny bit of smoke to come off of a match. But even when I colored in the match black with a sharpie, I couldn't get it to ignite. And I don't really think that's anything to knock the laser itself for because 50 milliwatts just isn't a whole lot of power for burning. Um, but I do want to make that known if you do want to buy the 50 milliwatt version, don't buy it with the intention of burning because this one just doesn't pack enough power. So I'm now going to transition into my reviewing aspect of this and starting off with what I really liked about this laser. Like I've said with the previous two Guardians I reviewed and pretty much all of the Sanwu lasers I've reviewed, what I like most about these is the hosts because they're very solid and well built and unique and I, I just like them a lot. I think they're crafted very well in my opinion. Um, I like the option for attachments with the threads at the top. I like the simplicity to it. There's not a lot of extra flash and extra buttons. It's just a simple standard host with a button. I found the divergence on this one to be very nice for a direct diode laser. Um, better than most of my direct diodes. And I found the the duty cycle on this one to be very good. When I followed the 60 seconds on, 60 seconds off that's advertised by Sanwu, I saw minimal to no heat in the host whatsoever. Um, it didn't warm up very much at all, so the duty cycle on this one was very nice. And the only major, uh, not major, but the only con for me was the price on this one. I found it to be rather steep for the power, and I know 520 is still kind of an exotic wavelength for some people, and it might be something that some wavelength collectors are willing to pay for the superior host and the somewhat exotic wavelength, but for me, I just thought the price was a bit steep when there are uh, 532s um, that go for $5 that are double the output of this one, like your standard Laser 303. So. Yeah, I thought the price was a bit high, but besides that, I didn't really have any other issues with it. The host was great. Um, that little one second delay was not a problem for me. It didn't really affect the use at all. And the fact that it wasn't able to burn was not a deal breaker for me either because I went into it knowing that this one was not going to be a burning laser, so I wasn't like disappointed or anything. But yeah, that, uh, that pretty much wraps up my opinions on this laser. I'd like to know um, if you guys had any questions in the comments or what your thoughts might be on the laser. And if you guys found this video useful in any way at all, hit that like button down below. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for lots of awesome laser reviews just like this one. And as always guys, thank you for watching from XM360.